Joining us now, House Speaker Mike Johnson. Speaker, welcome back to Fox News Sunday. Hey, Shannon. Great to be with you, as always. Okay, so we're talking the Middle East as we now await to see what Israel's response is to the incoming attack by Iran. There's questions, uh, there are questions about whether or not Congress may need to come back for a supplemental for Israel. Now, the same day that that attack was incoming from Iran, Secretary Blinken wrote this in uh, Foreign Affairs. He said, the Biden administration's strategy has been to put the United States in a much stronger geopolitical position today than it was four years ago. He says when the Harris Biden administration, Biden Harris administration came in, uh, our enemies saw a country that was in decline, that they, there was an undermining of norms and alliances. Uh, now the secretary says he doesn't do politics, but what do you make of his statements? The statement, it's nonsense, of course. Everything that they've done since day one, the Biden-Harris administration, is project weakness on the world stage. And that has put us in the most dangerous situation that we have been in since World War II. Uh, our allies are nervous. Our adversaries do not fear us. They don't respect us. And that is why China, Russia, Iran, North Korea, terrorists and tyrants around the world are coordinating against us. And that is why you're seeing the provocations of the war in Israel. Uh, Russia moved on Ukraine, China doing all the things they're doing and threatening Taiwan. None of this happened on, on, uh, on President Trump's watch because he was a steady hand, a strong hand at the wheel. We have got to reelect him so that we can restore the order in the world and project peace uh, through strength again. That's, that's what we have to get back to and it cannot happen soon enough. So while you consider uh, additional funding for Israel, obviously the main thought for most people is about Hurricane Helene and the victims left in the wake of that. Hundreds still missing. We don't even know their fate at this point. You've been to Georgia, uh, Florida. You have uh, plans to go to North Carolina as well. What are you seeing and what do you make of the local uh, state and Fed responses? Well, I would just tell you at the federal level, this has been a massive failure. And you could just ask the people there on the ground. I have been there. I was in Georgia. I was in Florida where Hurricane Helene made landfall there on the coast. And then we'll be going to the hardest hit parts of North Carolina on Wednesday of this week. Uh, when you talk to the people who are directly affected, they will tell you that this has been an abject failure. Uh, FEMA has lost sight of its core mission, I think, in so many cases. And the administration has not shown that they were prepared for this uh, th this eventuality and this terrible disaster. The thing about Hurricane Shannon is that we know that they're coming well in advance. You, you know, they had more than a week's notice of this, and yet we still have people who have not been served and even rescued in North Carolina. It is a heartbreaking, tragic and infuriating situation to have the federal government fail as they have. Well, and we've got now uh, the storm Milton that's being tracked in the Florida Gulf. Uh, may land there as a Category 3 later this week. So DHS Secretary Americus has said they don't have money to get through what they need for the rest of uh, this hurricane season. We've heard similar statements from the Secretary of Transportation. Um, President Biden has said more money is needed. He actually sent a, leader, a letter to congressional leaders on Friday night, including you. And he said specifically the Small Business Administration is in real trouble. Here's what he says. I warned the Congress of this potential shortfall even before Hurricane Helene landed on America's shores. I requested more funding for SBA multiple times over the past several months. And most recently, my administration underscored that request as you prepared a continuing resolution to fund the government. Will you call Congress back before the election? Do you need to? Uh, look, we'll be back in session immediately after the election. That's 30 days from now. The, the thing about these hurricanes and disasters of this magnitude is it, it takes a while to calculate the actual damages, and, and the states are going to need some time to do that. I'm from Louisiana. We're a hurricane-prone state. We're, we're experts at disaster recovery. We've done this. Uh, you don't just send estimates to the federal government, you send specific needs and requests based upon the actual damages. And that takes some time, especially with storms of this magnitude. So uh, Congress will do its job. Remember that before we left Washington, uh, the day before Helene hit, by the way, made landfall, uh, Congress appropriated 20 billion additional dollars to FEMA so that they would have the, the immediate dollars they need to address the immediate needs. Um, then after that, Congress always takes its uh, the due approach of providing what is necessary. Congress will provide. They, they, we will help the people in these disaster-prone areas. It's an appropriate role for the federal government, and you'll have bipartisan support for that. And it'll all happen in due time, and we'll get that job done. There's, there shouldn't be any concern about that at all. But there is with some of these agencies. So is the conflict or confusion about the fact that we're not doing things in regular order? There are continuous continuing resolutions. This is going to land December 20th. 
right before the holidays, and there are a number of agencies that are all fighting for a piece of the pie who say they can't have stability and count on what they need because this is the way we're funding the government piecemeal. Yeah, continuing resolutions are no way to fund the government, and I sure wish that we didn't have to do that, but they need to call Chuck Schumer in the Senate. The Democrat-led Senate literally did not pass one appropriations bill this cycle. They didn't put one bill on the floor. They didn't even try. So Chuck Schumer put us in the position. The House did. We passed appropriations bills. We got all of ours through committee, uh, over 72 percent of the federal funding done from the floor. And then the process stopped because the Senate wasn't engaging. You can't have two chambers negotiate the final spending bills if one chamber is not engaging at all. And that's the problem. So we were put in the CR uh, situation once again, but we will meet our obligations. Congress will do it. And I trust when we get back, uh, both chambers will work in earnest to get that job done. What I, before we leave the issue of Hurricane Helene, there's been a lot of pushback from the federal government, from federal agencies, saying that Republicans are out there spreading misinformation about FEMA funding and how it's been used for people who have come here as migrants, many of them illegally, millions of them, versus how the money is spent for disasters. Um, White House Press Secretary Corrine, Pierre, uh, Corrine John Pierre said this on Friday about conflating the two pools of funding. I mean, it's just categorically false. It is not true. It is a false statement. FEMA also calls this out as a rumor on their website and adds this. FEMA's disaster response efforts and individual assistance is funded through the Disaster Relief Fund, which is a dedicated fund for disaster efforts. Disaster Relief Fund money has not been diverted to other non-disaster related efforts. So what's your understanding with how FEMA money has been allocated and spent with regard to both the border and the hurricane? The streams of funding are different. That, that is not an untrue statement, of course. But the problem is what the American people see and what they're frustrated by is that FEMA should be involved, that the Federal Emergency Management Association, their mission is to help people in times like this of natural disaster, not to be engaged in using any pool of funding from any account for resettling illegal aliens who have come across the border. That's what the Biden administration Kamala Harris and Secretary Mayorkas have been engaged in this program, and they have spent precious treasure of the American people and taxpayers to do just that. When you see illegals in your local airport and you see them being transported around the country with planes, trains, and automobiles to every community everywhere, every state's a border state now because of that, that's the NGOs, the non-governmental organizations mostly that are transporting those people around and then they send the receipts to the federal government. And Biden, Harris, and Mayorkas gleefully pay those receipts because they open the border intentionally. The American people are disgusted by this, they're fed up with it, and so are Republicans in Congress. And it'll stop after November 5th because we're going to have unified government with Republicans in charge and we will bring sanity back to this situation. All right, we will see. People are well underway voting in dozens of states at this point. I want to ask you about this. One of your GOP colleagues, uh, Matt Rosendale, in the House said yesterday, I believe it was, that there is a possibility of using money that's earmarked for Ukraine. He said there's a way that Congress can reroute that to hurricane victims. Is that accurate and is that something Congress would consider doing? I, I didn't see that statement. I'm not sure what Matt's uh, referring to there. But look, I'll tell you that we are going to meet the obligations of the American people. It is the number one priority. When we say America first, that's what that means. We take care of our own household before we take care of the neighborhood. We will get that job done. Congress will do it. We will find the money because that's an appropriate priority for the federal government. Uh, we're going to get about that as soon as the states uh, turn in those estimates and request the funding. It'll happen and, and uh, we'll get it done. All right, Mr. Speaker, we always appreciate your time. Safe travels this week, sir. Thanks, Shannon. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.